Hello, and welcome to CivilNet. I'm your host, Paul Vartan Sukiasian. Today, our guest is Susanna Shamachian, Executive Director of the nonprofit Foundation for Armenian Science and Technology, or FAST, to tell us about how the organization is helping to build an ecosystem of education and research here that supports the country's big tech aspirations. Thanks for joining us, Susanna. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, Armenia is positioning itself as a player in the artificial intelligence world. And this is a really exciting story that perhaps has not gotten as much press as it should amongst all the, the hysteria over the internal disputes we've been having and the external fears about uh, peace deals and, and what's coming next. But I think it's really important to focus us in. You know, there's a lot to worry about, but there's also a lot of promise. So, you know, Firebird is a $500 million uh, supercomputer program that's coming here. But with Armenia's very small size, there are definitely some obstacles to be being, you know, competitive against the, the big players of America, Silicon Valley. So what approach do you suggest Armenia takes to adapt to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the AI race is a big deal now and every country is trying to figure out what to do with it. Um, and there are mainly two different types of things that are happening globally. One is in general trying to figure out how to make the general population more AI literate because of opportunities and threats that come with it. And then the second, um, you know, wing of things that the countries are trying to do, how do you try to compete in the industry? Per se, so how, how would you be able to conquer some of the niches as a business, as as a subsector of economy? Um, in case of Armenia, I think the AI history starts a bit earlier because of the legacy in technology, and mathematics that the country had, and then also uh, tech sector that has been trying to develop in Armenia for the last twenty years. There have been a lot of things going on in the in the sphere of software development, but the real talk around AI started maybe seven eight years ago when a couple of research labs appeared. A couple of startups appeared, like Crisp and Super Annotate, Pixar obviously being one of the first AI companies that our mini ecosystem had. But it wasn't a hype back in the days in, in such a way globally. Um, and I think Armenia is now among the countries that is trying to understand how it will be able to compete. Uh, definitely, we do have the talent and we already started unlike many ecosystems. Uh, as a small country, we do have some density of activities, uh, again, uh, per million uh, population. The amount of companies and engineers we have is quite decent. On the other hand, the educational pipeline, the research activity isn't that uh, active. So if we, for example, would consider having big global tech companies in Armenia, we need much more stuff going on. Uh, we do have some MNCs. Some of them do uh, things in the space of AI, definitely bringing in the compute is going to make Armenia very, very attractive because infrastructure currently is one of the main competition areas in the industry. And the second one is obviously access to data. Armenia can never compete in the space of data because we're just too small. Whatever we will have in the space of data, it won't be very com competitive. Uh, so bringing such infrastructure is a big enabler. Now the second nut to crack is how do we make sure that the talent and innovation pipeline here in-house is also really fast so that we just don't become a location for big tech, but we also ourselves are very, very dynamic in that space. Well, yeah, you want a population that's AI literate and tech literate to go along with the aspirations. And something you mentioned uh, was that whole idea of literacy. And um, like with AI fast becoming a major part of our lives, both the, in good and bad ways, uh, you know, there are those questions of AI ethics and harms that can come from it. And we're seeing those possibilities out there. And we don't want to be, we don't want to be taken advantage of by it. So while everyone can't be an expert in our whole population, there's definitely a need for everyone to have some degree of that literacy. So what does that look like? And, you know, especially for non-specialists and just the regular people in the school curriculum or the general workforce. And, you know, what's FAST doing towards that? Sure. Um, I think uh, there there is a lot of uh, discussion around this and it's important for the audience to understand that there are several layers of AI education. Uh, oftentimes when people hear AI education, they mean the literacy, but AI education has several layers. Uh, one of it is the literacy. So any anything that any human being has to know, similar to digital literacy and other things like that. Second is how do you use the AI tools 
in your work, for example, uh, to increase the economic productivity. So in general, the usage of AI tools similar to automation processes and digitalization in the previous era can have a significant economic development impact on various sectors, right? Anything from GovTech to agriculture to marketing, etc. And then the third layer is the AI creators per se. So how do you educate the future engineers, researchers who are creating the technology? So when people say AI education, these are these three layers. What we do at FAST and the program Generation AI is oriented particularly for nurturing future innovators. So the AI creators, basically. We are starting from school, teaching math, computer science, machine learning, and we want to make sure that we create enough opportunity for our younger generation in all Marses um, to be able to become an AI researcher. And because Armenia is small, again, going back, we will never be able to uh, compete in quantity. We have to compete really, really in quality. So that's uh, what we are focusing on, to create enough high quality talent in Armenia. But there is a lot of things going on uh, in the AI literacy space as well. We are currently in touch with the Ministry of Education and because what we do is already with the public system, so it's part of the system change, but on the advanced education uh, side, we are now discussing how we can engage the AI literacy curriculum into the school system starting from elementary up until high school because the government has now quite interesting computer science um, curriculum that is part of their big STEM reform curricula. And there will be a revision process uh, now going on in the country and we're supporting that process. And part of that will be most likely to include some AI literacy subjects into this new reform so that at large all kids in the schools will be able to get the literacy. Uh, important thing here is that the literacy aspect, actually, when you look into the international frameworks like UNESCO, OECD has just recently published a couple of frameworks, half of it is not about AI. It's mm -hmm. about critical thinking. It's about analytical thinking. It's about knowing how to ask questions and then analyze the answers because that is at least half of your interaction with the AI. In, a, in order for you to be able to properly use AI and then protect yourself from any biases, ethical challenges and other things, you actually have to have very strong critical thinking um, and um, cognitive uh, skills. So half of these frameworks are actually about teaching people how to think, analyze, etc. cetera. Um, many of the fears when it comes to ethics are often just general ethical fear, fears. Just AI ignites this discussion even more because vulnerability is much more accessible at the moment and you cannot stop the population from using it. What you have to do is to make sure that overall literacy level of the public is high, and then the digital skill literacy is high, and then on top of that, the AI literacy is high. That's interesting, because I didn't really realize that so much of the AI education would not be just specifically using the AI, but I mean, everyone knows that we need critical thinking here and everywhere in the world right exactly. now. We need it. So it's great to hear. And the younger generation is always just an exciting, they're, they're so dynamic and it's always you know, great to see what they're doing. So uh, in order for Armenia to move forward, you know, we also have to think about uh, where it's failing and, and what, what's important for in this field, for example. And, and one of the things I've heard is that knowledge transfer in Armenia is there, there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. So how is FAST you know, addressing these types of major problems and what can they do? Yeah, um, I think the current uh, challenge that Armenia has as a small nation and also in a very complex geopolitical situation is time. We have a window of time and we have to be very smart about it. And given what you mentioned in the very beginning about the vulnerabilities and many external factors and many socioeconomical challenges that people uh, face, it's very hard sometimes to think about all these things with the sense of urgency. But there is a very high sense of urgency to make sure that we act on these dynamics uh, fast enough. If we don't, we will be under the wave. Now we have to be ahead of the curve and for that we need to be smarter. Now in that sense, I think Armenia, like many other smaller nations, which are also at risk now in the AI race, because those who have access to the talent, to the capital, to the infrastructure and to the network will be those who are competing in the AI world. And then everyone else will be basically um, subject to whatever decisions are being made by those 
uh, ecosystems. Now, Armenia, unlike many other countries, has many competitive advantages. One is its tech ecosystem and many things that have been done. Um, and the second one is the vast amount of knowledge we have in the private sector and in diaspora. These things accelerate the process very much. For example, we started developing our AI curricula of advanced AI in schools three years ago, and we have done it on individual basis, leveraging the diaspora in Armenia globally to try to do this grassroots. One and a half years later, international community has published a UNESCO uh, framework, which is very much aligned with what our experts have done for a very symbolic uh, money in a very um, pressed sort of time frame. And this proves just the fact that our individual um, national sort of capacity of involving experts globally can produce the same amount and volume and quality of uh, output as all the international consortiums. Uh, this is to say that we have enormous human capital. So if you know specifically what you're asking for and how you're going to use it, our diaspora network and our expert network can produce amazing uh, globally competitive products, educational uh, programs, etc. So our example shows that as long as you have the actionability of things, so you know what you want, for example, you want an AI curricula for high school students, and then there are 20 experts globally, you engage five of them, and they specifically do this, they are producing amazing globally competitive uh, product. Um, this said, I think historically we have encountered a lot of situations when there have been a lot of willing people from uh, the Armenian uh, world who wanted to do things for Armenia as a country and statehood. But many of them have failed and have had that feeling of disappointment. One of the big reasons for that was either lack of understanding of the local context and realities and the visibility challenges, because in many areas there are a lot of visibility challenges. The second was that um, ideas, we all have ideas, right? But then the implementation power uh, is the main bottleneck. So very often who and how with what resources will be doing the actual work on the ground is one of the big bottlenecks. And I think we at FAST uh, throughout many experimentations and including failed learnings as well, we have I think partially cracked the nut on understanding how we can bring the top best knowledge from abroad, both diaspora and network of network, translate it into actionable product that doesn't diminish in any way the quality, but it's also actionable on the ground. And then pairing it with the right local capacity of implementing it so that it's end to end from idea to implementation and impact assessment. You have the entire value chain. In that case, you, you have amazing results. And I think we are not the only entity that has succeeded in this, but um, we definitely have uh, great results with this. And I think after maybe 2023, there is more and more willingness to do a lot more in coalitions and associations. I always say that I don't believe in the phrase that Armenians don't collaborate. That's mm -hmm. not true. <laughs> if if there is intention to collaborate, Armenians do collaborate. And, and I want to say as much as adversary that we have all faced locally and globally uh, is devastating. But if the result of it is us being more united and us doing much more together and having bigger results, then at least there is one positive sort of um, outcome of all of us having more sense of urgency to listen to each other more, to work together uh, more. And, and we see more of that last three years. And I think in that sense, that's where our competitive advantage also is as Armenia, because we have a sense of urgency to react faster because we're not sure how much time we have. Mm -hmm. So, for example, having Firebird doing something of that magnitude in Armenia is now using that window of opportunity. And then the question is how all of us are going to support this and many other uh, things to make sure that this window of opportunity is used for the best of the longer term future for Armenia. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you here, because I feel like a lot of people, maybe in the diaspora, especially in the past years, have become so beaten down by the stories of war and negativity and, and loss that they're just kind of broken and at a loss as to what to do. But you never know who's watching this. And 
This is kind of that message to them. If you know you have a skill, whether it is related to AI and critical thinking or something else, you can be involved in it in Armenia. We just have to have the right ways for them to do it so it doesn't end up becoming a failure like those ones that you mentioned. And there really is a lot of possibility. I'm seeing it every day here. So as a last question, um, you've talked about that there's hype surrounding AI, certainly a lot of it, but there's also opportunity. This is a real thing that can make a real substantive change in Armenia especially a small nation like Armenia. So what would a realistic but ambitious roadmap for Armenia's AI future look like in your view, like both in terms of education, but also the economic productivity? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there is enormous amount of opportunity here. There are a couple of low hanging fruits. First of all, we definitely need to try to convert the youth as soon as possible into the AI literacy space, because as much as it is a hype, uh, still, many, many uh, young people, especially of school age, are not into this process uh, very much. And also they don't have proper guidance. So they, their teachers and their parents mostly don't know either for, for, for them to be able to guide. So they try to sort of learn by doing, and that's not the best way to do these things. Partially it is, but it, ideally you would have some guidance. And then you could use the, use the use to convert the parents and the grandparents sort of, at least in the space of AI literacy, to make sure that the safety challenges and cybersecurity challenges that we have in general in the digital space as Armenia are overcome through maybe uh, youth being a bit more tech savvy and converting them as low hanging fruit. There are also a couple of industry areas that could be and should be converted ASAP with AI and automation in general. Uh, Tech industry itself actually is not using uh, AI as much as it, it would uh, seem. So I think, first of all, engaging and enhancing the usage of proper AI tools in, in tech industry would be the low hanging fruit. And then there are digital um, also industries that could be converted, like for example, same agriculture. Um, we have been talking about digitalization of agriculture for a long, long uh, while. And there are now already a couple of uh, efforts in Armenia to include robotics, computer vision, drones, and these types of things in the, into agriculture. I think one of the problems we have, right, e even in that industry is the human uh, uh, capital. So what if we overcome it through some of the AI and hardware solutions in par? Um, that said, I think it's also important to understand the AI agentic world as well. Um, I mean, this is a bit more technical, but AI agents could be replacing some of the workforce. For example, you can have AI teacher assistants. And if, if you don't have enough teachers, if you have the right AI teacher assistance uh, program that knows your curricula, your system, your mentality, your content and your exercises and helps the students, for example, learn better, you know, this could actually help us increase the quality of education with relevantly cost efficient uh, solutions. So I think one of the big aspects is how do we convert enough amount of people to be more AI literate? And then how do we convert enough amount of people to start using those tools and then using the word of mouth and the Armenian community um, engagement uh, mechanisms to spread that among the industries. Um, and obviously the ambitious one from our perspective would be to make sure that we also systemically educate AI creators at scale. That's why we do what we do with the Generation AI. Starting from this year, we're going to have all, all Marses and regions covered, all major and medium cities covered with the high school students level. Next year, we're going to have the undergrad program. So as we convert the general public and several sectors into more AI literal literate communities, we can in parallel educate the future AI creators who will be becoming future founders of startups, future top AI engineers, and then all the global tech companies and top research communities would want to collaborate with the AI talent here instead of just headhunting them, let's say, to global spaces. Uh, well, thank you so much, Susanna, for that exciting look of what's really going on, especially as diasporans, we don't always, we don't always get to see that. So that's why it's great to have you here to let people know and, and things to look forward to. You know, this Armenia is a story of success in the making, and there's a lot that we have to, to hope for. So to keep up the good work. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. And thank you for joining CivilNet.